Hi, I'm meteorologist Mike Mahalik, and with me today is long-range expert Jim Sullivan. And we're going to go over what the factors are for the upcoming winter that we're looking at for this 2018-19 season. So Jim's going to fill us in on all those facts. And uh, the first thing we want to check out when we're looking at a winter outlook is uh, probably the oceans, right, Jim? Yeah, that's a good place to start. Okay. So let's head on over to the oceans here. This is the sur sea surface temperature anomalies across the globe. And the first thing we want to point out here is uh, this area across the equatorial Pacific. So what are we looking at here? Yeah, so what we're watching for out here is El Nino development. Uh, we had a La Nina last year, and it looks like we're going to probably have a weak El Nino this year. We have a lot of warm water building, mainly towards the central Pacific. Not a, you know, basin wide, but kind of a west or central base quote unquote el nino for this winter okay so because it's more uh western based on the el nino how does that affect the typical pattern so let me pull up what a typical right. el nino does look like across the uh, united states now so how does that shift this pattern a little bit what's the implications yeah, so we'll still probably have the active storm track across the south. Okay. Um, the warmth will probably be a little bit less emphasized with this weaker western-based El Nino. So we might not be warm all the way across the northern tier. That could be pulled a little bit farther west, which it might open the door for you know a few more cold intrusions out east. So a little bit cooler than normal for what a typical El Nino would be that would be more east. Right, not like, you know three years ago, 15, 16, where it was, you know, real mild most of the winter. Okay, well, that's a good point to note for this winter outlook. Now, I want to get back to the sea surface temperature anomalies because we want to point out our second region here, right? And what's uh, going on here in the North Pacific? Right, so a lot of warm water up there, and where that warm water is can be important. So in similar El Nino years, if the warm water was like south of Alaska off of like the western Canadian coast, those years tended to be colder here in the central and eastern United States than if the warm water was say over the northwest Pacific, those were a little bit milder overall, maybe a little cooler out west. So these waters south of Alaska, they have warmed a little bit in the last month, so that is okay. a trend we're monitoring as we head into the winter for maybe some cooler weather at times. All right, well, another thing that we want to talk about is how this affects the jet stream right. uh, going into North America. You talked a little bit about it, but yeah. if we want to pull up a typical setup for uh, the North Pacific being a little bit warmer than normal, and uh, where would the jet stream pretty much set up here? Yeah, so if those warmer waters are south of Alaska and off the west coast, that tends to put a ridge in the jet stream on the west coast, which tends to allow more... I think more... I got a graphic for that. Let's yeah, oh, yes, <laughs> you do. There we go. Yeah, Perfect. That'll, yeah, put, put a ridge in the jet stream on the west coast, which can kind of help guide some colder air into like the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Northeast compared to if those waters were colder south of Alaska. Okay, so we're looking for warmer weather out to the west and right. a little bit of cooler weather into the northeastern right. quarter of the country yeah. um, based on those warmer weather, or warmer sea surface temperatures, I should say, uh, in the North Pacific. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things that we talk about a lot during the winter season is um, the NAO. Right. Um, so let's discuss that a little bit because that was really important back in March of uh, last season because you remember it was very cold, it was very snowy up in the uh, northeastern U.S. So let's go over the NAO a little bit and uh, first off, let's do the positive phase of the NAO. What does that quite mean? Yeah, so a positive phase of the NAO, it means there's a stronger low pressure than normal near Greenland and Iceland and that speeds up the jet stream over the eastern United States. So that makes it hard for cold air to really sit makes it hard for big storms to kind of form and, you know, dump snow on the northeast and mid-Atlantic. Sure. So basically the storms just kind of zip along pretty quickly. Yep. They don't have time to develop into really big storms. Right. It's, it's more of nuisance type it's events. It's milder, yeah. Things like that. Okay. But last March was the negative NAO, so let's bring up that. So what can you tell me here about this negative NAO? Why, why does this make it more cold and, and right. a bit more stormy? Yeah, so what we get with a negative NAO is you get a big high pressure south of Greenland over towards Iceland, and that backs everything up. So you'll get cold and storms to dump into the eastern United States, and they'll kind of sit there, and that's when you can get cold air that lasts a while, storms that it slowly move and intensify, and that's we typically get more snow in the northeast and mid-Atlantic when the NAO is mm -hmm. negative. 
And this was probably a big reason in last March we Absolutely. had all of those nor'easters that kept winding up along right. the eastern seaboard. Right, all four or five of them, whatever it was, yeah. So now, is there anything as far as which one of these that we might be leaning towards seeing more of during this winter? Yeah, as is often the case, we have some mixed signals, but that western base kind of weaker El Nino development does favor a negative NAO. So mm -hmm. I do think we'll see this at times. It might not be constant for the whole winter, but I suspect at some point it'll we'll get a negative NAO and it might get kind of colder and snowier here in the east for you know, at yeah. least a few weeks. So for your snow lovers out there, you're looking for a negative NAO is, oh, yeah. is yeah. what we're looking for. Absolutely. Okay, so let's wrap this all up, Jim. Um, you know, here's the overall pattern we're looking for across North America. Uh, this is what the jet streams will look like, the uh, subtropical jet and also the northern jet. So explain kind of um, how you came up with this, why you put the ridge where right. it is. Yeah, so we kind of started with your typical El Nino. Um, it had the active subtropical jet across the south. Still think we'll see that. We emphasize this ridge a little bit more uh, because the El Nino will be a little farther west and because of those warmer waters developing south of Alaska. If that happens, it'll be a little cooler in the east. It might not be all that mild. Um, and, you know, New England's kind of a you know, question mark. Depends on if the NAO goes negative and how tall that ridge is. But it mm -hmm. should definitely be cooler across the south with that active subtropical jet stream. And, you know, maybe we get a few Arctic intrusions at times. Okay, so this is the basic setup based on what we're seeing right now. Now, if something happened like maybe the waters in the, uh, the south of Alaska were a little bit cooler than normal, right. how would that affect this jet stream pattern? Yeah, that would flatten out this ridge out west, and it would be, probably be a little bit milder overall across the central and northern United States. Okay, so that's interesting to note for sure. Right. Um, and then as far as, you know, we will have that active southern stream based on that El Nino. So with that, I mean, does the south look like they might see a little bit more snow here with it being a little bit chilly at times? Yeah, it's certainly possible. You know, things always have to go right for it to snow in the deep south, but sure. the pieces might be on the map this year. So yeah, they could see some more snow this winter. So overall, when you're talking about, you know, the mid-Atlantic, um, you know, what do you think we're seeing there? Do we think we're seeing uh, more mixed type events, more rain events, which way... You know, if we get a negative NAO, there could certainly be some snowier events down into the mid-Atlantic. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of a wild card. It might be, you know, we see it for just a few weeks and that's when they get their snow. Uh, but El Ninos in general tend to be a little snowier in the mid-Atlantic than, say, a La Nina. So okay. definitely something we're watching for this Probably year. Probably because of the more of the moisture coming right. from those storms from right. the south. And uh, as far as uh, for our folks up in New England... We're just looking for that NAO maybe to be the wild card as to big storms or... Right, or yeah, New England like. tends to do a little better in La Nina's, but since the El Nino is kind of weaker, and since, you know, we may see that negative NAO at times, there certainly could be some bigger storms up in New England at some point. Okay, well, that's good to know. I think we covered pretty much everything. Oh, one last thing, though, yeah. for our Midwest clients, how does this set up bear for Chicago, Indy, over towards maybe Cincinnati? Yeah. Uh, probably a little bit less snow th than normal because, okay. you know, the jet stream's kind of riding to their north, the subtropical jet stream's staying to their south, but, mm. you know, it only takes a couple weeks of something different for them to get snow, so I'm sure they'll see s a little bit of snow in so there. So do you think it would be maybe more some minor events or maybe... Maybe clippers, stuff like clippers. that, clippers riding down in the northern stream. Okay, those are usually, you know, light snow events that yeah. come out of the uh, northern plains for the most part. Well, hey, Jim, I really appreciate you being yeah. with us today. Yeah, and happy, uh, happy to do it. For everybody out there, I just wanted to let you know that winter preview number two is coming out the week of September 17th. So alert clients, please check your email during that week because we will be sending that new forecast out with any updates we do have. In the meantime, please check us out on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram right there and weatherworksinc.com. Always, that's the place to go for all your weather information.